Hello class, let's start with chapter 2, the promotion industry and the learning of objectives and outcomes for this chapter are first to discuss important trends transforming the promotion industry, two, to describe the promotion industry size, structure and participants, three, summarize what advertising and promotion agencies do and how they are compensated, Four, identify experts who help plan and execute integrated marketing communications campaign. And number five, discuss the role played by media organizations in integrated marketing communications campaigns. First of all, the uh, industry has seen a consolidation into giant full service advertising agencies, which provide a variety of uh, services that in the past were offered by separate agencies by by different fragmented agencies so now we see a consolidation with fewer advertising agencies companies conglomerates corporations that uh, have the control of these um, advertising agencies that used to be independent. You have had a lot of mergings and acquisitions, etc. You have also uh, narrower, narrower media control in terms of more media outlets in fewer hands, right? So you see also there a concentration of media um, companies, TV networks, radio stations, etc. Uh, not to mention online and digital outlets. R this is due to the relaxed regulations um, by the Federal Communications Commission. And although you have more advertising agencies and companies in fewer hands, concentrating in fewer hands, marketers have now and companies have now more media outlets options, right? There has been also um, uh, an increase in the available options to reach consumers. So you have more TV networks and channels and streaming services. You have more um, online and digital um, uh, platforms. And therefore you as a marketer have to decide among different alternatives that uh, are available now. And, and this is something that, of course, has to do with technological advances. Many of these outlets belong or are controlled by the same consolidated uh, media companies. For example, in your textbook, uh, you, you, you find there that Back in the, in the 1990s, uh, U.S. consumers could watch, I think, about 20, 27 television networks, television channels. And now you have over 100 TV channels to, to choose from. So this talks about this media clutter that we are facing. Um, in the industry. And of course, as mentioned in the previous chapter, consumers have more control due to interactive media, right? Internet, social media, DVRs. You, you, you don't have to watch advertisements anymore, right? You, you can control and record the content that you want to see and you just skip the, the commercial advertisements. So these are trends that we see in the industry and an industry that is large. You have um, about $300 billion of advertising that is uh, paid for in the United States alone. Worldwide, it is uh, $600 uh, billion of advertising expenditure. So this is a huge industry in which the main um client is of course marketers as we call them for the purpose of, of this uh, chapter which are simply those businesses 
that need to communicate with their consumers, with the potential customers. Uh, and these are businesses that could be manufacturers. These could be retailers or, or um, members of the trade channels. Uh, this could be non-profit organizations, governments. So this is what we call the marketer, talking about what is the industry of the, um, of, of the promotion environment. So first of all, you have marketers that are the organizations who use advertising and other promotional techniques to communicate with their target markets, to stimulate awareness, uh, create demand, etc. Then you have advertising and promotion agencies. These advertising and promotion agencies can be broken down in two categories, uh, as their names say. Those that are uh, providing services, creative and business services to clients to plan, prepare, and play the advertising. These are agencies that just like in the same way you do your semester project for this assignment, sorry, for this course, um, you, 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 are, you are to do the planning, preparation, and placing of, of the message that you want to send out there. And another type of agency is the promotion agency with focus more on promotional efforts such as sampling, event, uh, promotion, etc. So the advertising agency we can say is um, covering a broader array of services, including of course the creative artistic content, right, of commercials, uh, uh, and TV spots, etc., versus a promotion agency which is more focused on that, uh, as the name says, on that activity, which is promotion. You have other parties who are relevant, which are the external facilitators, organizations, or individuals that provide specialized services in areas for which the agency does not have expertise. Some agencies are full service agency and they do everything, research, the creative content production, etc. Some agencies do not have all services in house, so they outsource, let's say, some of these services. Those are external facilitators. Uh, you have, of course, the media organizations, the media outlets, TV networks, print media, online digital content, platforms, etc., which are the vehicles to reach consumers. And of course, the target audience, those, uh, those people that you want to send your message to, that you want to communicate with. And in this exhibit 2.1, we can see uh, this illustration, this figure, including these participants. Sometimes, as we see here, on this arrow on the top of the figure going from marketers to media organizations. Sometimes a marketing, uh, a marketer, a company, a corporation has its own in-house um, uh, creative services, advertising um, services. So they will do, they will do direct um, connection or they will contract with media organizations to put their messages in those outlets without hiring an advertising or promotion agency because they have the services. But most of the companies will rely on the expertise and the specialization of agencies, which may in turn get the support of external facilitators or not. What, what are the types of advertising agencies most commonly um, seen? Well, you have full service agencies that do everything. And again, this relates back to this uh, consolidation of firms. We now have many more 
full service agency that in the past, because of this merging and acquisition of different smaller agencies into larger organizations, but, but still you have several non um, full service agencies. This may be creative boutiques that, for example, uh, are agencies specializing in some function they do very well, such as creative and artistic services, because they have a team of um, creative people uh, that are very good in um, getting the message across through their uh, content they, they develop. You have some agency that focus or specialize on interactive media, right? Newer technologies to reach consumers, internet, uh, interactive kiosks, podcasting, etc. So they are focused on web-based solution for direct marketing and target market communications. You have some specialists in media outlets, media specialists that they are more in the business of connecting or bro doing brokerage, they are brokers between agencies and media corporations. So they purchase media time and space and they do consulting in support of that. Why? Because of one of the reasons we um, expressed uh, a couple of minutes ago, there is a media clutter now and, and you need the uh, support and specialization from this, this type of agencies. And sometimes you have companies that have their own in-house divisions or departments or agencies within their structure, right? So these are large manufacturers, producers of goods and services who do not rely on external agencies, but they have their in-house staff and team, right? And that of course gives them greater control. Some of the limitations that we see in this description here at the bottom, some of these limitations include possible lack of objectivity because you are not relying on an outsider view, a, a more uh, neutral, let's say more neutral uh, view. And for instance, uh, one, one of the examples that I want to bring up here has to do with the new campaign by Bud Light. Some of you probably have seen it. These are these commercials that say dilly dilly. Let, let's go to this link here at the bottom of the this slide. <clears throat> I hope you are able to, to see this and listen a, a, and watch this video because it talks about how how uh, Hanerser Bush Mm, they had their own team do, doing the creative process for this campaign. And actually they said, well, we, we, did, we did some tests and focus groups and pilots, and it didn't look like this commercial was going to be successful. Uh, but at the end, they trusted the, their instinct and their feeling and they decided to go on and then they hire an external agency that was in charge of the production process the the the, the artistic um the, the the play of the of the characters etc doing the commercial itself but the original idea the concept that's something that came from their in-house team and this video um, talks about uh, how the the CEO or, or, or vice president, sorry, for for marketing, the VP for marketing, um, had to they had to deal with this. Let, let's see this.
This is a, a, an article that appears, appeared in Business Insider. You have the link on this slide that I'm posting on Blackboard. So I hope you can take a look to it again. This, this guy, the, the chief marketing officer, the CMO, um, he's Brazilian. And as he said in his testimony, uh, they were skeptical that the, that the campaign would work based on that, of that uh, creative idea. But at the end, they decided to go with it and it's been successful. So this is the product of an in-house staff that created the concept that they wanted to transmit and they hired an external agency to do the production. Now you have other type of agency which are the, those focused on promotions, not necessarily on the creative part of advertising and the message and the positioning and the value that is communicated to consumers, but more in, in promotion activities. Remember one of the tools of the promotional mix in addition to advertising is that of sales promotion and that, uh, for example, relates to these different organizations that do, for instance, direct marketing and database services. When you have a, a, a marketing effort that focuses on trying to get customers from a database or a mail listing, contacting them to get immediate response, well, then you need a different type of function that sometimes you don't have the capability in your firm to do. For example, having a fulfillment center to ensure that consumers um, receive their product they order and you can establish a, a quick communication. Well, you don't have the staff, you don't have the structure, the, the expertise, so you hire one of these agencies. Sometimes you are not expert in e-commerce, so then you can outsource that part of your marketing activity, not all marketing activity, but that part to a to, a, to an e-commerce agency that specializes in doing electronic media, digital um, promotion, um, doing some Swift stays coupons and, and, and those sort of um, tactics, but through the, the internet. Mm, sales promotions, right? Traditional sales promotions that you need to work in coordination with retailers, right? If your product is sold mostly through retailers, well, you don't have probably the staff to, to, to go all over the different branches of the, of the retailer of the store and in, in, in a geographical area because you don't have presence there. So you get the support from agencies specializing in self-promotion, in event planning, right? Those are other type of agencies who are experts in finding location, organizing the, the, the events. And then you have the, the staff that will be promoting the, the brand like we see here in the lower right hand side picture, which is something that we see very often when we go out and go to a festival or go to a fair or or here on campus sometimes. Um, but who who does that part of the work? Well, these are third party companies that, that are in charge of it. If the marketer, the the company that produces and manufactures the product, if they don't have a team or a staff in charge of that. Some firms are spe specialized in design only in that. So they are good in um, graphic design uh, and, and therefore they are hired as support by other agencies. So it can get a little bit complex if we try to see the broad picture of all the participants. But one more time, they are there because for some type of businesses, they provide services better than a full service agency, for example, or it can be a matter of budget. Um, and also uh, last but not least, public relations agencies or firms 
that of course are in charge of um, establishing relationship, managing relationships with media, the community, uh, industry associations, the government, etc. Right? So they specialize in lobbying, in press releases, in crisis handling, right? Crisis control. So they are these companies are there for that. In Exhibit 2.3 what we see now is the structure, the conventional structure of a full service ad agency. Again, some agencies do not do all full service functions, but if we were to see the normal structure, it would look like this. First, you have account executives. The account executives are, we can say these are the, the managers. These are, of course, the office may have different uh, positions, but you have a manager who is leading the project. This is the main contact between the agency and the client and the marketer, the, the company that manufactures a good of, and, or service and is interested in launching a promotional campaign well these people in the account services department they are the ones who will identify what are the needs what are the benefits that the brand wants to 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 send out to communicate with the audiences what is the competitive advantages that are to be emphasized in the campaign who are the the segments of consumers, the, tar the target audiences to, to focus that campaign to. So this is the liaison. This is the office with which the marketer, the, the company is having the contact in leading this development process. Here on the second um, participant here, the, the textbook and this Exhibit 2.3, it says here, Marketing Services Director. I'm pointing here with the arrow, but it should not be Marketing Services Director. It should be the Marketing Research Services. Marketing Research Services, those are the, the ones that will be doing, as the names say, Marketing Research. And this is in page 37 in your textbook. If in order to decide and determine what is the best way to reach a group of consumers, it's necessary to do marketing research. Well, the, the advertising agency has a, a staff who is in charge of doing that. Of course, for certain type of research, um, project you may need to 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 do some consultation or or use an external agency but most of the full-time service agency will have their own marketing research service you have then in the third place creative services those are the the art director the the creative people the artistic uh, staff who will come up with different proposals of creative ideas, right? Because the account service manager and the, and the customer may decide to do, to use a, a, a particular concept to use for a campaign, right? But there is, there is a number of ways to say the same, the same message. So if the account service and the client come up with a message to transmit, to focus the marketing campaign on a message that you consider will be effective in reaching the audience, then you have to decide in which way you will, we will, you will communicate that message. There are many ways to say, to say the same thing. So it could be through a variety of different um, creative strategies and those are the ones that will be proposed by the Creative Service Office. As we saw in the video five minutes ago, the Bud Light 
commercial, they decided to go with that creative strategy of using this medieval uh, setting, right, in, 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 in resembling the Games of Thrones TV series, the TV show, and they decided to use this dilly dilly uh, phrase that became viral. So they decided to do it that way, but there could be other manners in which they could um, say something to the audiences. Production services, number four, you have to actually do the commercial to actually print the brochures or the displays and banners. So these are the ones who do the TV and print um, that will be utilized for the marketing campaign. Unless the, um, the, the client or the uh, advertising agency decides to outsource this. Again, some of these functions can be outsourced and, and provided through external support uh, parties. We will talk about that later. Media services. This is the contact, this is the relation established with the TV network, with the newspaper, with the magazines, with these companies that have the billboards spaces. So they are there to help select the best um, media outlets and negotiating rates, etc. And last but not least, the administrative services, as any company, advertising agencies have they have staff, they have to do accounting and pay payroll and, and billing, etc. So these are the day-to-day -day business operations, right? Uh, exhibit 2.2, you have examples of these positions uh, that for some of you, the, the, they may be potential, um, potential uh, opportunities in, in, in your professional development. I know some of you have uh, already experience in, in working with advertising organization, promotion organizations. So some of you who have not been exposed to that may find this a promissory career path in, in, in the future. What about the way in which agencies uh, get compensated for their services. Of course, there is not a rule that is written for all agencies, but mm, traditionally advertising agencies work on a commission basis, right? As a percentage of, uh, of the cost that is paid to the media outlet. So this is important. Here in this example that we see on this slide, the commission system, it says it's based on an agree upon percentage, which would be around 15%, probably a, a little bit more like in this exhibit, of the total amount built by a media organization. So the, the, the commission will depend on how much the agents, the marketer, sorry, the company, the business that is to market its product or service, how much they are paying to the radio and televisions and online platforms and, and websites to advertise their products. So the agency will propose a campaign, will do the research and come up with the creative ideas and commercials and, and the production of it. But then where this is, um, uh, through which channels and media outlet this is uh, transmitted to the target audiences, that will determine the commission. Because it's possible that the, that the client, that the business is, is, is going to decide to, to spend more on, on certain on certain media outlets than others. So based on the total amount paid to media um, organizations, that's the commission that is paid to the agency. But that is changing. 
that is changing into other ways of uh, compensating the agencies for different reasons. For example, one of the common approaches to, to compensation is now through markup charges. Why is this? Well, because some of the marketing activities and promotional activities that are part of a campaign, they are not going through television or radio or billboard advertising. They are not going to be placed out there and pay a, a, a price for, for the space or the airtime in order to pay a commission or calculate a commission for the agency. Sometimes there are services like event promotion, for example, right? Like self-promotions, like public relations that you cannot calculate. Let me go back, back there. That you cannot calculate it as, as a percentage of, a, of the amount built to a media organization, right? Oh, sorry, by a media organization. Sometimes you will have other activities that you cannot use to calculate a percentage for commission. So therefore, what you is you, you add a different percentage on top on top of the the fifteen percent, for example, right? The fifteen percent that we talk in the commission based system. So again, you, you still have to use a reference point in order to decide how much to, to charge, but this is not necessarily a fixed 15% or 17% or 20% rate. Another approach is to use a fee system, right? And this is based on, the, on an hourly rate across all services. So instead of paying a percentage, there is a fixed rate per hour and depending how much time and, uh, and work has to be put into a project, into a campaign, developing a campaign, then you will charge per hour, right? Similar to the way uh, you pay to an attorney or some other professionals. And one of the one of the most um, common type of compensation approaches nowadays is pay for results, which is I'm not going to pay an advertising agency by commission percentage. I'm not going to pay a fee, but I'm going to pay based on results. Let's wait to see if the campaign works or not. Of course, there is a way to, to, to pay something in advance. You, the, the agency will not wait until next three or four months to see the result, but, but there is a, a mechanism in which you can determine that part of the compensation will be based on the results of criteria, uh, of the results criteria according to accomplishing communication objectives. In other words, Let's measure how much the brand awareness increase based on this campaign as a result of this campaign. Let's look at specific indicators or metrics such as brand identification or knowledge to determine how much I will pay. If we have positive results, higher brand awareness, identification, and knowledge, based on those metrics, your compensation um, will, be, will be higher. Sales volume, as, as you can read in this, in this uh, slide, sales volumes are not used as a criteria because they depend on several other factors. So, you cannot just use sales volume as a simple direct measure to determine uh, compensation because sales is, is, is a product or is determined by not just by the campaign, but by several other mm, variables, prices, product positioning, uh, the features, the, the 
a distribution um, programs, etc. Let's talk now about external facilitators. Remember, we saw that in in figure 2.1 earlier, and we said, well, there are some companies that support the work of advertising and promotion agency. And these are, of course, marketing research firms that they do analysis of macro trends, right? But they also do primary research. They do focus groups, surveys, etc. Other consultants, right, that they can be specialized or focus on certain aspects of the promotional processes. For example, you may have a consultant who will study and will give you results about ways to increase customer relationships um, with, with, with your target audiences, right? So this is not necessarily part of the traditional work of an advertising agency, but this is uh, an, uh, an a specialized project that you need somebody with expertise on that. Production facilitators, right? These provide elements to produce and broadcast production or print materials, studio facilities, um, actors, models, etc. Right? You don't have actors or models in your staff. So you want, for example, to um, hire, hire a, a number of people to promote in your uh, marketing campaign certain events. Well, you rely on these uh, facilitators, you rely on sales promotion agencies, etc. Software firms, of course, in nowadays, um, digital environment, you require more and more the, the benefit of having experts on uh, digital technologies, right? So we, we may not know how to do programming. We may not know how to do these fancy uh, websites with these visual effects. Well, you need some spe someone specialized in software. And finally, before finishing this chapter lecture, um, what are the media organizations that you will use to, as a vehicle to put your message out there? Well, these are, as shown in Exhibit 2.5, um, broadcast media, right? Traditional television and radio. You have print media, magazines, newspapers, etc. I mean, some of you, especially because of your the age range of, of you students in this class uh, as millennials, you do not read as much uh, newspaper of magazines as your parents or your grandparents, but still there are certain segments that if they are part of your marketing strategy and they are the customers that you go after, you need to reach them through that way, right? Especially when we talk about uh, generational cohorts, when we talk about certain segments based on age or based on intellectual interests. Yes, somebody who is interested in, in financial markets, in politics, etc., probably they will not read the physical paper uh, as much as in the past, but they will still read online prop, um, content. Uh, but still, print media is, is part of, of the options of media organizations out there. You have more and more interactive media, right? Um, online computer services, home shopping, broadcast, kiosks, uh, CDs. I think we don't have as many CDs use as in in the past in the last decade but still that's part of the uh, alternatives or the of the menu of interactive media choices and of course smartphone yeah that that's part of 
um, everyday life for more and more consumers. Support media, those that are not part of the traditional broadcast media or print media, we are talking about outdoor advertising, directories, point of purchase displays, event sponsorship, right? We talked about that a while ago. And there are media conglomerates that own multiple media, right? As we saw at the beginning of this lecture online, uh, there is a tendency towards greater concentration of media owned by, by fewer um, uh, companies. So let's finish here and make sure to read chapter two in addition to this overview so that you can be prepared for the quiz and also the exam, right?